Hi everyone, Raquel here from Scrap Cozy. Today I'm going to show you how to create a wood panel effect using Fusions and some of my newest stamps that I've designed for Paper Artsy, ESC20. Here are some of the supplies that I'll be using in this video. Some satin glaze, some chalk paint. You will see that I'll use a different color, a brush, and another one as well that you'll see next. Some infusions and my stamps. First, I'm going to mark three lines. A little one very close to the edge and two more that will divide my panels in three. And this will be the back side of my card. I'm going to trim that little piece and I'll flip the card. Now on the back side of the card I'm going to use some chalk finish fresco paint and I will paint everything white. This is so I get a non-porous surface to work with. Fresco paints dry matte, so if you see some shine it's because this is still wet. They will dry very soon, but if you're very impatient you can always heat set that with a heat tool. And now the next step I'm going to apply the wood effect with infusions and satin glaze. I'm going to prepare a big blob of glaze on that part of the craft sheet and then I will sprinkle some infusions on top of the card. You can see the end result on the left corner of the screen. I'm going to load my brush a lot, I don't want to run out of glaze and then I'm going to start giving strokes, vertical strokes up and down, moving all the infusions up and down. As you may remember from previous videos, infusions are a two-part uh, die. They have some walnut crystals which are the brown dots that you see over there and there are some pigments, some color. In this case I'm using golden sands, that is why you see a yellow result in my card. What I'm doing here is dragging with that glaze all the pigments as well as the walnut crystals. And those walnut crystals are helping me creating this wood effect. So I'm working on them and extending them as much as I can so then I can get that result. Now I'm flipping my card and then I'm cutting the panels using the lines that I previously draw. So I will shuffle them and arrange them as I like so they look very different from each other and they would resemble real wood. My next step is getting a brown background and I'm using some French roast fresco acrylic paint and I'm going to paint in this case five pieces. I will only need one but this is because this video was part of a different series of postcards. I created five of them and I needed five frames so here I'm me being efficient <laughs> time-wise and creating those five frames at once. So just by arranging the pages in that size you just get those frames very easily. But then for my fifth card, which is this one, the wood panel, I'm going to cover absolutely everything in French rose paint. And this will give me a very dark background to work with and I will be able to arrange the three pieces on top of this piece of paper. Again, once this dries matte, it means that everything is dry and you can always heat set that with a heat tool. But they are very fast drying paints, so you don't need to wait a lot. My next step is going to be aging each piece of the wood panel. This will make even more realistic that wood. It will seem that there are three independent pieces of wood that I'm arranging together. So you just need archival ink in this stage because my surface is non-porous so I want some sort of ink that stays there. So archival ink, potting soil in this case, it's perfect for this. And now I'm going to just mount the wood panel. I'm using here a very extreme um, adhesive. <laughs> this is just a double-sided tape but you could always use some sort of glue. And I'm sticking it on the back of all the three panels and I'll start arranging them, leaving a little gap on each side and on top and bottom. So I'm starting with one of the pieces and I'm making sure that the margin on all parts is exactly the same. And then I'll do the opposite side, the same thing. And then I'll place the one in the center. And as you remember, we trimmed a little piece, right? That little trim will let me see now all the 
a brown background when I place this third piece. My next step is going to be stamping all the scene. So I'm going to stamp that wreath there with a sentiment. And then I'm going to stamp that daisy three times in three different heights. Having the three daisies at different heights it makes my wood panel to seem more organic and more fun. And then as a final touch I'm going to just stamp that little piece in an angle in both corners. And my next step is going to be adding some color. I'm going to add some color by using satin glaze and then some infusions. For this one I'm starting with slate blue. So I'm picking some of the satin glaze from the main pot of glaze <laughs> that I have in my craft sheet and I'm melting it very well. I'm mixing it very, very well. So I get all the pigments and the walnut dissolved properly. And then I'm going to add that blue color everywhere that I want to have blue in the card. In this case, it's going to be just the petals of the daisies. Then I'm going to clean the brush in a piece of towel, then some water and then make it dry. It needs to be dry for the next color. And then some sunset beach and same thing. Some glaze on top of the sunset beach, mix it very well. Testing on the back that I like that color and then applying the red in the part of the card that I like. Once all the red is in place then I will change color again and using the same brush. So I'll be just cleaning the brush with a piece of paper towel and then drop it into water and then again drying my brush. Then I will just get some of that satin glaze and mix it with the next color. So my next color is going to be golden sands which I'm mixing there and getting a yellow. It's exactly the same color as I'm using in the background but because this is a translucent paint that I'm creating by adding this color on top I'm still adding color and it's noticeable. Can't you see? The result of the uh, final card is on the left corner so you can see the result uh, after I add all the color on it. So as you can see I'm working now with the yellow and the only one left will be the green one which is olive tree. So once I'm done with the yellow I'm going to clean the brush in the same way, mix my final color and apply the green all over the place where I want it. So final cleanup and then getting a little bit more of satin glaze and some infusions, mix it very very well and I'll have my own translucent paint created. I'm also using satin glaze and not just water because my surface is non-porous. So I want something that actually stays and doesn't move at all. So um, satin glaze will dry pretty quickly as well and that's very good. And it makes also like a resist of that color on that card. So that's it in terms of color and it will be just bending a final touch that we will add to the end. Since this is a translucent paint you can keep on building color if you want more. Final step is aging the panel. So I'm just getting again the same color of archival ink, potting soil and I'm adding it to the edges with some cut and dry foam. And this will just create like a vignette effect that will look very nice. Here are some close-up pictures of the final project. I hope you like it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment because I love to read them all and I will reply to you as soon as I can. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. If you really like this sort of videos, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the ring bell button so you don't miss any of them. I'm putting in the screen some videos that you may like. Enjoy them and see you in the next one. Bye!